Lisa here from South East London. I hope you're all well. Um, I'd just like to thank all the new subscribers and I hope you join the Facebook group as well. Today we have another challenge and there's somebody sitting beside me um, who suggested that she did a challenge on Saturday night. We were actually at the same party. In fact, we're sister-in-laws. <laughs> Say hello, Julie. Hello, Trinita. <laughs> and as you can see, she's another one out of the Glen box. She's local as well. And we all have the same accent. <laughs> <laughs> now she has come in and we have had we meet regularly and we have afternoon tea at what ten o'clock in the morning <laughs> and it isn't actually afternoon tea it's mid-morning coffee so we've had our scones and our jam and cream so I've no idea what she's got in this rather big envelope I begin to feel a bit worried actually because it's very flat, isn't it? It is, yes. The light, you <laughs> held that up and the light shone through it. I, I think I know, know what it is. Oh, yes, but what can you do with it? Well, if I don't like it, <laughs> do you want to know what I'll do with it? Anyway, I want your hands here. Yeah, see, we're very close, aren't we, Julie? We are, <laughs> yes. Wait, do you want to move up here so you can undo your envelope? It's a feather. But what feather is it? I don't know. I have to explain that Julie is an ornithologist, aren't you? And she is very, very clever at identifying birds within two mile radius, yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless she's got her glasses on. Are the colours suggest a seagull, yeah? No. Oh. It's very big, isn't it? How long is this? Oh my goodness, it's 12 inches long. Mm. So, you haven't picked this up from the park over the back, have you? No. Where did you pick this up from? My garden. Your garden? <clears throat> Well, it's not a sparrow, is it? <laughs> <laughs> or a robin. I thought you were going to say a pigeon. It's not a pigeon, is it? No. I was going to say, no, pigeons aren't that long, are they? I'm going to pop it there, look. Oh, that is really gorgeous. This is the top. Look at the top. This white indentation here. Not all of the this type of bird have that. So that's unique to that bird itself. Does that mean that the, the bird, all the other feathers on the bird have got this? No. So, oh, it doesn't make like a ring or a row? No. Oh, what can you tell so us about if, this bird? If you see this bird in your garden every day and it had its wings open, if you see this white mark, you would be able to say, that's the one that was there yesterday. No, really? Mm. So these are unique but that's to... That's unique to that one bird. Good grief. So another bird of the same species or the same yeah. model? Yeah. <laughs> we'll have this, but... A different one. But a different one. Well, I think that is really amazing. That is re That would be really important then to the design, wouldn't it? This. It would, yeah. I love this fluffy bit here. And also, would you be able to tell if this bird could keep itself dry with these feathers? I always thought that all feathers were waterproof. Is it because th there's a sheen on here? This bird is waterproof. That was the word I was trying to think of. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, see, I, I um, became a teacher, so I learned words like waterproof. Oh, yes, okay. took me, waterproof. It took me three years to learn that word <laughs> at uni. <laughs> I don't know what bird this is. And look at this, look. You see, look yeah. this. See, I like the shapes here. You see, you've got beautiful shapes here. And you've got a contrasting colour. Look, how the light flows into the dark. 
Yeah. So that is one of our design elements, the contrast between light and dark. Contrast as well between short and long, but also here between fine and sort of um, dense. That's right. So put aside of our misery. Yeah, I'm going to make that a bit bigger in case that isn't coming out too well. I think it is. Oh, yeah, look at that. Pull it down so you can see the top. See the top. That is the bit that you said is unique. To that yeah, bird. Yeah, to that bird. And what about the shape? Is there anything? This would be in the wing, probably, because of the size, because of the length. Right, why are these, is this side longer than that side? Is That's any... how feathers are. Really? You know what, I've never noticed that before. All those feathers over the park, I've never noticed. And here, you've got here, this is dark, this is all white, but this bit here is clear and that is where it fits into the bird itself. Just going to move that up. Cause I... Right, this bit... The fit, quill bit. That is the quill. That is what is inside the bird. Well, as much as that? Bit. Yeah. And that's this an awful is all lot. Yeah. That's an awful lot to be piercing a bird's flesh, isn't it? Yeah, but when, when you look at your hair and you pull a hair out and you see your cuticle on the end, uh -huh. which is the root of your hair, then you'd be able to say, well, that isn't that oh. bad, really. At this stage, I'm just adding that Julie is also a qualified hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you, Julie? Yes. <laughs> Many years ago. So, oh, right, put us out of our misery. What is this feather? I'm just going to make it smaller. So cover your eyes, everyone. No, not you, Julie. <laughs> you don't need to cover your eyes. Or are you sleeping? sleeping. You're sleeping. Yeah. It's that party the other night. Oh, definitely. You had fabulous. Too, yeah. Fabulous party. And she was. had too much to drink, everybody. And she got very, very happy. I don't believe, I don't believe very that. happy. Even, Even your son. No. <laughs> <laughs> Even your son said, "Look at my mom." Look at and she was just sitting in the chair. Could be a triple bonus. Yeah, I bought you a <laughs> no, I, I bought you a single, but it looked double because I had extra ice put yes, in there. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you had a good time in that oh, sort. Of, and nice. I did. I shook a leg and hurt my hip, so um, that taught me a bit of a lesson. You looked like you was flying. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was sitting. <laughs> Someone had dropped a pee. <laughs> anyway, you digress. Now tell us, what's this? Have you got any guesses? I can only think um, seagull. I'm going by the colour. I can only think a seagull. See, I haven't a clue about birds. I love birds, but... I Don't think... you look at any of the books you buy me? No. <laughs> No, the flower ones, because sometimes when I get you one, I get the partner book, the flower oh, one. Right. But I, yeah, I've got birdie books over there, but... It and is. I do love the the shapes and this... You're not keeping that, I'm taking it back. Oh, yeah, no, I need to keep this for my design. <laughs> uh, did you say Glenn's? Subscribe to Glenn's video. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, because I won't do to this what I did to that. It was vintage. Oh, Anybody who didn't see that, um, Glenn, subscribe to Glenn, who lives up the road, who brought in some vintage Meccano, and he said to me, you can have this. So to get shapes, I bent it in half. Oh, God. And it was only laughed on the screen. <laughs> 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 oh, he said, he wanted to scream when he oh, saw oh, me bending he it. Well, I, don't, I can't tell you how old he is, but he retires in two months, and he's had this most of his life. This is what I must say, is I've had this feather for quite a few years, so it might have faded in colour. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, 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 that might help you. You've had, oh, gosh. Um, I've got a bucket. A seaside a bucket. bucket that I a keep. A seaside bucket? Is that is that the link? No, mm. I've got a seaside bucket that I keep 
feathers in. Oh, no, you're... I see... <coughs> if I look out the window now, w am I likely to see one of these birds? Possibly. Um, at this height, all I can see really is squirrels. I uh, bet one of your subscribers would... Yeah, without a doubt. And is it native to the UK? Yeah. Do they do a lot of walking? I'm thinking the yeah. park... They do, they do. Are they in the park over the bird? Yeah. They are. Give me a clue. What do they begin? What letter? M. Merlot. No, that's wine, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that takes us back to Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> no, oh. give up. Give in. You win. Magpie. Yeah. I have magpies out there. Oh, no. But there's no, that was, oh, there's no. Oh, there was a pigeon out there, so I couldn't say, look out there now. Oh, good grey. And yeah. I love magpies. But I think of magpies being really black and white. Yeah. But, but as I said, I've had that at home for a long time. So the blackness has probably faded a bit. Oh, well, I, I won't keep that. I, what I'll do is I'll take some pictures of it and I'll refer back to this and I'll use that. Um, but you take that home and then when I've done the piece, you can't, well, you, you come in and out anyway. So when I've done it, we'll do this again and then I will show you what I've done. Okay, yeah. Um, and then you can go, oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. All right, even if it's not, that's the deal. We could do a whole <laughs> show on my, my bucket of feathers. Yeah, I most certainly could. Perhaps you can bring the feathers back as well. Yeah. Bring some feathers in. And, um, yeah, in fact, I could set you a challenge. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, that you could do something with one of your feathers. Even this one. And I'll do what I normally do. You do something with your with this, so we're both working from the same inspiration. Yeah. I'll be using textiles. Well, you know what I do. Yeah. So I'll be using my textile art, and you can do whatever you want. It could be with your music. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. In fact, you could get your beautiful grandson to help you. Yeah. Oh, What's well, up? Love that. It's yeah. up to you. So right, you set me a challenge. I've set you one. Yeah. We, could, we call this a double challenge. A double Tricky. Way. How long have we got? Well, I'm finishing a project at the moment. So what shall we say? Um, it's another project. Do, do, do. What do you reckon? For about a month. Next, no, I say next, next coffee. Christmas. No! <laughs> I was going to say next coffee morning, but that could be tomorrow, couldn't it? No, I'm not, I'm not doing it tonight. Yeah, oh. okay then. Um, we keep tabs on each other, like we do anyway. Yeah. Is it a month? A, a month. month. Yeah. yeah, okay then. Right, and as I said to Glenn, now you can go. All right? Right, yeah. Okay. Leave my cup. See you later. <laughs> hey, where are you taking my cup? Leave my cup. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was Julie. Um, I apologise for, for that. <laughs> so, on to our challenge, and this time it will be a double one. Wow. So, this is really exciting, and we hope you think so. Anyway. Crack on, onwards and upwards. Absolutely. See you soon, Julie. See you next week. Say bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have fun. Oh, that Julie's gone now. And I've spent a little bit of time thinking about what to do. Now, she took the feather away with her, so <laughs> luckily I took some photographs. And it's not the same as having a feather. But I think after the story about Glenn's vintage piece of Meccano, she didn't feel safe leaving her vintage feather here. So she's taken that away. But anyway, I've taken these photographs um, uh, and, and I've enlarged them. Now, you don't have to do this. I've printed them out and I've, I've done a couple of sizes, different sizes, and just part of the feather, not the whole lot. Now, another way of doing this is freehand. You could just um, do your feather freehand. Or you could cut a shape, a template, feather shape. Don't forget, you're only being inspired by the feather. So, it's not going to be an exact replica. Um, there's no point doing it if it is. 
so I've used I've cut this out now the main reason is to show you the lines on the feather it's ma I'm making this bigger as you can see now if you can see the lines on here this feather is made up of lots and lots of lines you see all these lovely lovely lines all related lines so here we go now I'd like to use that characteristic on my design the lines and I think that is probably the only characteristic that I'll actually be sticking to apart from the basic shape you see around here um, apart from that then I'm just going to play around and just really be inspired by the feather and that is all as, and as I said concentrating on all these lines down here now I've made a couple of these of different sizes um, I'm quite out of ink now I've used up all the last of my ink and it's so expensive but anyway it did save me sketching so there we are that's the smaller one which I favour I'm going to put these on the sides actually and then you can see them better now what I like about this as well are the shapes here the negative shapes between so that the actual shape is the positive shape if you remember and the shapes between are the negative shapes and these negative shapes here are just lovely now part of our design um, techniques if you like or our design elements is to exaggerate or eliminate and we're quite free to do that no one's going to tell you that's wrong never forget your work is never wrong look you can see them better on the larger one as well look at these beautiful shapes so I want to exploit those the negative shapes not sure how not sure it this really is in its infancy at the moment all this I just know I want the lines and I want the negative shapes now I was about to say about exaggerating and eliminating what I have done I have cut out this one of these and here we have it there so if you can see that this is an exact copy of this and I cut out oh well actually I cut out two because as you can see I have joined two of these together by cutting out two and then joining them along here so that's that one and then I've had to turn the, the second one over so I've ended up with um, this shape where I have joined them and my notes here this is the template cutting tissue now I've actually cut some in tissue as I've written here because I think it might be easier to manipulate or not and I'm not sure whether it might be too soft so as you can see that is the template just by adding the two two shapes together here I can turn that round maybe if I can make that a bit smaller so there we are so it's the two shapes two of these joined in the middle here so we have the nice feathery bit and as I just said I also cut that in tissue because I think on the fabric that might be easier to work with but I think it might be too flimsy actually and I'll probably use this as the template now I have exaggerated some of these shapes here I've made it some of these wider which has made these narrower which is part of our design contrast element we're contrasting the shapes and I can see here I'm going to which one is that there I'm going to possibly take that small one out just there 
and just make that like so just to make this more pronounced some of these negative shapes more pronounced now at the moment it's quite symmetrical that doesn't matter um, doesn't matter at all it might not be sym symmetrical by the time I've actually sat here and had a look I might decide to maybe make that one different or not now why it's it finishes here in a sharp straight line here here and here it's because I'm at the moment I'm intending to make a small one and take these off the edge of the, the fabric but I'm looking at that now and I'm wondering if oh yeah right that is a smaller one same shape but as you can see there it's smaller where I was just experimenting with the design but I'm wondering if well, I'm going to turn this on its side again so you can see it like this I'm wondering if I should join those and make that even more of a feathery shape with the narrow bit at the top Ooh, or oh, where are the ten? Well, perhaps I haven't finished with this yet. Then now that is this is the tissue version of this. Now I'm wondering about making that bigger. I really wanted to do something quick and short and sharp. It's a challenge, um, so it's not meant to be long and arduous. But as you know, and I always say, these take on a life of their own as our work does and I'm wondering that if I should oh make it longer oh gosh I thought I'd finished well I think that might be better longer so I'm literally just going to use this and then maybe flip it over somehow like that um, like that or if I use the smaller one that takes on more of a feather shape now I don't want to exactly replicate the, sh the feather shape but we all know that feathers sort of are that shape so we have a narrower bit up here no actually if I'm going to take the edges off the off the fabric I don't actually gain anything by using a smaller shape do I no I think I'm going to play around with this shape I really didn't want it too big now the next thing to consider is the colour the fabric I've come up with um, and I was guided by the fabric because in my head I, I had a picture of maybe doing something white, shimmery, silvery to capture the glossiness and the colours in the feather but then I've been swayed by the fabric so this will be the background, the background. and this already has lines on it oh yeah maybe that this um, I'm thinking aloud now, so maybe half something like that. Right, right I haven't got much further with the fabric, but I have play, played about with the paper templates. I'm just going to show you what I've done. I've just added like a little strip of paper at the back and I've extended the two parts, the two pieces of templates I've just extended them a little bit and now I've stuck them down with glue and I'm just going to redefine these shapes okay, so just cut round here and round here, right now I'm not too sure what to do with this bit here with the extension bit right so there that is now our feather shape I might need to make that just a little bit smaller because that really is quite a big 
chunky hole at the moment and I'm not keen on that so I will do something like that and make it smaller just fill it in that way maybe yeah so now I'm calling this finished apart from just a few little cosmetic trims here around here that could do that now couldn't I just trim it off around there underneath here then it's finished and it really is ready now for the fabric so and I've got half this pink purple and I this half is the blue with the raised texture in the lines now I've seen it I've actually sewn that right sides together and then sewn on the wrong side and I've done that on the sewing machine for quickness I ironed it and I've attached it to the back of the backing fabric or the lining now if you don't want to use a sewing machine and I don't always but it just happens to be handy this week you can over sew this these edges here with just large stitches like side with tacking stitches just to hold it in place and to stop the fray or you can just tack pieces together all the way round nice big tacking okay, stitches and, and, and this honest. is a really pretty piece of fabric you can see that black white and silver and it is textured but look at this look at the amount of fraying this will fray really madly so I've already put the iron-on interfacing on the back that will give it a little bit of firmness for when I'm working with it but also it will help stop the fray um, while I am working so I do advise that if you can do use the iron-on interfacing it really is marvellous marvellous stuff now this will go on here and I'm going to cut out this shape all the way around now I imagine this could take a little bit of time now what I could do I could actually pin it here and then cut it, it out but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to turn this over and I'm going to draw around it and then cut it out so it really doesn't matter which way I use it because it's practically symmetrical anyway so I will put just a couple of pins in I'm going to use it that way actually I'm going to pop just a couple of pins in there to hold it down while I draw around it and then this is cut out so let's make a start now I've run into a little bit of a problem and I'm not really surprised um, I was anticipating this a little while ago this edge in particular is really really fraying and even though I've interfaced the back of it it is still fraying I thought there's only one course of action for this the net is needed not really for decoration now but to save this from fraying anymore so the net will hold all this in place and should save it from fraying now I've cut I have these lovely big rolls of net um, so I've cut some white from there and I've cut black from elsewhere I'm going to do half with the black net and half with the white net so light, that hasn't made much difference. Oh, that's made it darker, hasn't it? Ooh, that's quite a nice effect. Um, now, I'm not too worried about the join because the join will at some point um, be decorative. It will be embroidered or it will be covered anyway. So just a few pins in here now immediately I'm feeling a bit more confident because all those bits there are lying flat and they won't be taking any more strain so to speak 
Well, I should take it first, just the rows along here, just to catch the net and make sure the net lies down. So I don't want too much. One, two, three, maybe four, four light rows attacking. So now all this is held down securely. Lots of tacking stitches along here and around the edge so it, there's no movement there at all. I've started stitching around the outline and I did this I forgot to film it so that is why I've actually made a start but I haven't done too much before I remembered that I should be doing this with the camera and not snuggled up on the settee but um, you all know how to do this nice needle sharp pointed end um, a good length of three stranded thread so three strands there and a nice running stitch or slow stitch and it really is just in and out now I'm going around the edge of the feather and I'm just going through the background the lining I should say the lining the background the blue the dark blue and so the pinky color here and through to the net now I'm not actually going through the edge of the feather now why I'm avoiding the edge of the feather it's to cut out any fraying at this stage or breaking up of that shape I think if I if I were to do this right on the edge here of the feather then I risk tearing into the little area here at the edge that is likely to fray and breaking up that um, well defined shape so that is the reason I'm not going through the edge well it's now 2.48 in the morning and once again um, no time to sleep I need to do this and I know some of you will be watching this at the very same time um, it's just a pity that we don't live near each other because we could have um, an insomniac's night time coffee couldn't we so not ladies who coffee in the daytime but ladies and gentlemen who coffee at night time now wouldn't that be something but anyway while I'm killing the twilight hours I thought I would carry on with this now you can possibly see that I have actually outlined it all and now I'm going to make it bigger and my eyes are very tired at the moment so I need to make it bigger so you can see look I've outlined all around it and put the black or the dark color on the light color and the light color on the dark color but the next thing to do is to actually think about the spine what I'm calling the spine of the feather and by doing that that will give me shorter sections to work on I did sit back and I debated whether to do these in one go one section tree each heart as one section then I thought no I, I, I'm not sure that's quite the look I'm looking for so that is why I'm now going to put the spine in along here um, so I break it into two distinctive sections now this is what I'm going to use we haven't actually done this before as a group I'm going to pop this down it's just ordinary bog standard string that will go down here okay it, it will just be held in place why I couch over it now couching is a stitch a method where you go from one side to the other side and hold it in place if I were to do it on here you wouldn't see it so once again I'll exaggerate I'll use our exaggerated method this 
will act as our string so I'm going to call this string from now on that's the string and this will be a needle needle and thread as usual wool and a darning needle let's put it down so, so you need to imagine this bit here is the top of the feather and I'm working down towards the end so I might even just pin that okay yeah good idea I'm going to pin that in place and I'm going to work towards it I'm going to do blanket stitch now we have done blanket stitch earlier on I'm going to do it again okay so not your thread now my thread when I actually come to do this will be six strands I'll be using six strands of embroidery thread and I will have knotted the end as I have done here and used my favourite needle the pointed one that I used earlier on with the nice big eye so you have to imagine now this is the needle I've just shown you so I've come in um, I need to turn this around so you can see it that way which makes it just a bit difficult for me and I'm going to do a blanket stitch over this now so just as we did we've always done blanket stitch in from the back hold it down I'm going to close these up slightly so it's just a chain stitch really on its side so thumb down you're holding that in place I'm just going to make that larger and then you'll get a better idea and it gets rid of my chest from the corner of the screen <gasps> that's always a dodgy moment so I'm holding that down with my thumb and I'm going back up here at the side uh, I might want it wide so I would go in there but I don't I want it quite close so I'm going back in there okay and then I'm going to bring it out as long as I want it so I want about the same length although I might actually vary the length doesn't have to be the same so the thread is underneath the needle but my thumb is still holding it down and pull it and this is all I'm going to do all the way along the length of my string okay but if you want something a little bit more um, I'd say interesting then use our contrast wide against close long against short so don't forget your contrast in your designing but don't forget you can't go wrong none of it's wrong Decisions. And that I think I might good. try it with two so I'm going to pop it up here now I'm just going to place a pin there you can put a little bit of sellotape there if you like now don't worry about that piece that extends over that's dealt with after you can actually pull it down or chop it off that's no problem at all so where's the join there it is I'm going to follow that line down here you don't have to do this you can keep this just um, loose and guide it with your hand but I find it easy to do it that way so I've got a little tail each end now I've got a tail there and it's being held down by the pin there and at the top I have another tail being held down by a pin now I am not using a pure white thread I'm using an off-white thread because the pure white would be too stark against this what is looking like grey the overall effect is looking grey now that is the white that is white wool and the embroidery thread the white is the same the same as that but this is the thread I'm actually using can you see the difference it's more of a beige or a dirty white so I'm using that and as I said I'm using six strands and I'm just going to do exactly as I've just done on the demonstration one but I'll start it on the camera so you can see me starting it but I will finish it off the camera 
So I'll start here. This. So I'm just going to turn it around slowly so you can see it um, the right way up. Right, I'll make it a little bit bigger to show you what I've done. I've put two rows of blanket stitch along here back to back and that gives that nice uneven almost like a fishbone effect down the spine of the feather. I'm now going to weave through the legs of the first row. Goodness, I'm playing about with this and I am sorry, just so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to start at this side, I like to start this side and with a blunt needle, it needs to be a blunt needle so it doesn't pick up little threads. Okay, if I had a nice sharp needle, it would pick up and strand some of the threads that I'm now going to weave through. So I'll come th I've knotted it and I'm going to come through from the back like this. Oh, I need to keep this sort of still. Well, I'll come through from the back and I'm just going to weave through the legs that are couching down the string. So just over and under, like normal weaving, over and under, all the way along. So that didn't take long, a couple of seconds, right to the end and I'm going to now take the thread through to the back. There we go. And just tie that off around the back to make sure that doesn't come out. So, but you do that with all your threads. And there we have the spine. Now I think that black um, gives it something else. It gives it another dimension and a little bit more depth and definition here. And I really like that effect. I think that just looks nice even. I just love this and I think each one of these is broken up into a small section. So to my mind, this is making me think, these little broken up sections here, created by the legs of the blanket stitch, are reminding me of these sections here, all broken up. You see the shape here, it's just echoing the shapes that I have here. So I thought, hmm, I'm going to be inspired by this and I'm going to further break these sections up. All these sections I'm now going to break up again. Now I love the colours here um, and I really do think that it's a feather colour. All these different sorts of uh, blacks and greys and whites and this gorgeous not sure if it's silver or gold, I think it's a, a cross between the two here and it's giving it the shimmery look. So I don't really want to add any more black or these colours to it. I think this stands alone with just these colours. So now I'm thinking I need to add actual colour. Turn away from the neutrals and add some colour. So the obvious choice for me is to bring these colours in from the background onto the surface. Um, it's going to be a bigger challenge actually than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was just going to be a 20 minutes, half an hour challenge, but it's turning into quite a major project. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Having said that, I'm really enjoying it. So, yeah, thank you, Julie. So, um, getting back to this, yeah, I'm going to incorporate some of these colours, but not as bright. I want them muted. So, I've delved into my um, 
strand my box where I keep all these and I've come up with these now all these apart from the green which will be a splash of another colour will be an introduction to a tiny bit of focus colour this one all these colours here are actually in the background so I've chosen one oh and that one as well now this is the one I've chosen to start with so if I can find my needle there it is I'm going to start on there with this colour breaking them up now the idea is to at the moment to break them up like this um, let's have a look this white bulb marker will do I'm going to break them up somehow at the moment now I'm not sure I think I might go in the middle it's not going to be uniform on each one but I will this is how I'm intending to break them up at the moment so I'm echoing the little lines of the feather the lines that we spoke about um, at the beginning and I think this is what I'm going to do but I'm not even going to finish that that sentence because you know that how that goes it takes on the life of it uh, its own this is the intention at the moment and so on and so on so it will be interesting to see oh gosh this is this is very um cathartic oh yeah I like doing this right so there we are now this is how I'm going to start yeah. and go all the way around just as I've done here and um, let's see how that looks so I have I've gone back to my lovely needle it's quite a long long one two inches and now let's see yes it is it's two inches long and it's nice and sharp with a big eye and three strands of thread and I've knotted it so I'm going to start this one in the middle but they probably won't all be in the middle because then that's beginning to look very uniform isn't it um, now oh I haven't thought about the stitch have I um, yeah I'll, just for the dividers I'm going to do running stitch or slow stitch depending on how you're using this if you're doing this mindfully it will be slow stitch if you're not it will be running stitch however the outcome will be the same right now let me just make this a little bit bigger and get my bust out of the way again right yeah I can see there's more impact in front of me at the moment than there is on the screen but hey ho I wonder if I need perhaps thicker thread more strands maybe right and then I'm going to take it round here just going to follow this all the way round and this is how I'm going to continue on right the that's all being done now each section's been done all but this one and that one I decided to leave those two plain this colour I think has worked very well I'm not sure you can see that on the on the screen I used this this colour on this side and it's just bringing the colour from here across a little bit I'll make it the screen bigger so hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about uh, let's see if I can get that bigger 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 back. yeah if you can see here um this one this line here sort of sticks out quite a lot comes round they all follow the same the same format as this side just a different color and i personally i think this colors work better than that although this is a lighter color 
on the dark background so that's probably why we've got the contrast there between light and dark again and here we have the contrast between the dark thread and the lighter background so lots of contrast now going on so I've gone back um, to our stitch book <coughs> one of them I've gone back to this one I'm not sure if this is the first or the second one but anyway I've gone back to this and I've had a look through right I like this effect um, slow stitch running and lace running stitch okay all the same both the same um, and I believe that that's part of the Eiffel Tower that bit there the bottom bit of the Eiffel Tower but um, apart from that I like this I like this effect there's couching a um, little bit of couching there but all you might as well say it's all apart from that bit there um, slow stitch running stitch with some herringbone there and that's couching again so I've got the running stitch which I've already used um, what we got here so we've got a mixture here of running stitch in fact running stitch and beads there that all looks like running stitch now you all know that I love the pinwheel so I'm going to use pinwheel so that's running stitch pinwheel we've got running stitch there as well and a couple of crosses so I do like that so pinwheel will be one herringbone once again one of my favorite stitches otherwise it wouldn't be in our stitch book I've moved that herringbone and for anyone who's new this is actually a journal that is why there are blank spaces it's a journal which I use really to demonstrate stitches but it is a stitch journal for people to write in so this one herringbone again oh feather stitch Oh, feather stitch yeah I've just got that feather stitch we must use feather stitch on the feather so so far it's pinwheel um, and feather stitch yeah definitely and these are all little examples feather stitch again that, that's particularly nice French knots yes French knots so what was that feather stitch French knots uh, feather stitch French knots and pinwheels See these blank pages work for journaling. Uh, French knots, yeah, I like that. French knots. Some crosses. Crosses are always good to vary the size. So yeah, I'm beginning to formulate this now in my head. Some needle weaving. Now I think at this stage uh, the best thing to do needle weaving. I think I'll be doing most of these actually. Yeah, with some applique. I'm going to do a bit more applique and this just happens to be on the table um, yeah that's the only bit that's on there oh my goodness and that would be perfect it's dark it's muted oh and it's even interfaced so I might introduce some red as well but for the moment I'm going to concentrate on the stitches so I now know what stitches I'm going to use oh, this has taken about an hour maybe just over an hour to do these are strips the coloured pieces here they're just strips like this I cut them out and pinned them into the spaces that I wanted just one pin they're, they've all been cross stitched over that's the couching in the same grey thread using six strands this one I'm not sure whether I should use it at all at the moment I'm not going to put any more pieces to be couched down um, I need to spend a little time away from it now I need something here but I'm not sure if I need to take the red over there for some balance or maybe the green or introduce something else now these, I only had the three, and these were from a, a cloth bag that my daughter gave me. Um, and this was like the top, I th oh was it a dress? I'm not sure now whether it was from a dress or um, a cloth bag. And these were 
in between these little studs, these buttons. So I've taken just a quick update <coughs> to show you how far I've got. I've added the pinwheels here, 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 and one at the top here. I've also added some cross stitching along there. And of course I've added my favourite feather stitch here. Um, I've also added it, where else, where else, here. Now I think this looks particularly nice. Now all this stitching I've done here is using six strands of thread. So feather stitch there and I've taken it across there as well. And I've got some more there and there. Now if I have my way I would use feather stitch just non-stop but um, I haven't I need to add contrast so I've added the uh, blanket stitch here and here um, 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 and also what have I had ah oh, yeah the other favorite stitch herringbone stitch down here and up here now these two shapes this one here and if I pull that down slightly, this one there, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger, like that. You can see I completely followed the line here. I've given that like a, a U shape around the edge here. And I've done the same here with the same thread, same colored thread. And I just think by doing that, by pairing them up, the same here and the same there, um, I think it, it brings the design together. The pinwheel is just the blanket stitch in a circle and feather stitch. The feather stitch is beautiful, which also is very similar to the blanket stitch. And what else do cross stitch? I think I'll start with the feather stitch, I'll do a feather stitch and the herringbone very very quickly and I'll do it on here. So the first one will be feather stitch and we have done this before and it's in our book, our stitch book. So in through the back, not in the back. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger for you. In from the back, hold it down with your thumb here, as wide as you want it or as narrow. So in there, still holding the thread down here with your thumb, and then as long as you want it, you might want it there, you might want it there, it's completely up to you. I'm going to have it there, and then bring it through carefully, just carefully releasing that so it doesn't knot and there you are the first feather stitch and then you're going to bring it over here as wide as you want it as narrow bring it there and just repeat it all you're doing is repeating that stitch now when you get to stitch three you swing the thread over that side and you do exactly the same. Still hold the thread down, then you bring it down here and there. So that is the feather stitch. I'll take that through there. Herringbone is a lovely stitch. Herringbone, nice knot in the end of your thread come through from the back to the front you're going to slant your thread as long as you want it and you're going to pick up just a little piece of fabric like that okay so you can see we've got a nice slant there we've picked up a little piece of thread and we're going to cross it cross it there as long as short as you want or in line with that, that one if you want a nice straight line. You're going to do the same here. 
pick up a little bit of thread, a little bit of fabric with a thread underneath. You can see that, how that is. And then you're going to cross it back like that. In line with that if you want it, straight, long as short as you want. Right, so thread under the needle again and then back on itself and that is all there is to that beautiful beautiful stitch okay so those are the two stitches and that's just a brief recap and I'll carry on now with this um, I'm not sure I think I'm, I'm going to work here I've already started working from here I'm working up this side and just incorporating that that side at times like there so my next move will be possibly here on that uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do there but I'll work up and each time I do a few I'll get back and I'll show you so last time you you saw this I've added some single fly stitches here in red uh, a row there and a couple there um, I don't think I've done any more so just those two there and I've also added some single chain stitches here across a grey strip of fabric my daughter-in-law's dress as you know that grey satin there and it's being couched down with these single chain stitches and I think that's a really nice, nice um, stitch to do, to couch, to use as couching. I think I've used them somewhere else as well. Um, hmm, if I have, I can't see them, but they're definitely there somewhere. Now, this is also, just this patch here of white is a nod to the white that is in the tip of the feather. The feather that Julie showed us has a little bit at the top, a little section of white um, on the magpie's wing and she said that it was like a, a thumbprint. It was very unique to that bird. So that is just a little nod to that white section. And the other thing that I've done, I've used some running stitch and I've whipped it right now can I pick it out where ah I'm going to move this up just slightly so you can see now the bottom bit right so I've used running stitch here and I've whipped it and all the whipping means is that the I've taken the needle and thread just through the stitches I've woven through the stitches over and over and over or under and under I haven't woven them under and over, under and over, that would be interlacing or lacing. I've just whipped it over, over and over. A very nice, very nice way to cheer up your running stitch or your slow stitch. Um, so I did some there. And the reason why I actually did their whipped stitch was because I put some grey along here, grey running stitch, and you just couldn't see it, so there was no point having it there. So I thought, why oh, no, I'll, I'll lace it. Um, yeah, lace. Did I say lace it? No, I'll whip it, and it just makes it stand out a little bit more and adds to the texture. I've also <laughs> used it somewhere else, and I can't see where it is, but it is definitely round about the middle somewhere no, I can't see it at the moment this is now finished of stitching this side um, isn't quite finished there isn't that much to do I might add a few more st rows of maybe um, running stitch on here here but I'd like to make a feature of this shape here this white shape I'm just I'm going to make this big if you look at this background fabric here you can see that it's a distinctive white shape around there and I think that is really lovely and once again that's like a nod to the white bit 
um, on the bird feather. And here is the finished piece. I have put down some applique, sequin applique. And now this is applique and not couched. Now, at this stage, I can't remember where I put it. I think I put some there. Um, where else did I pop it? Did I put some there? Now, wherever there is a sequin applique that wasn't there before, that is where I popped it down. The green fly stitches are here. Here, oh, you can only see a little bit of them there and here. Now, I think that just adds a little bit of a focal point and it breaks up the dark and the red here just by adding something else there. And then I've gone through it and I've added more running stitch. I've highlighted this shape here with black and white rows of running stitch. And I've just gone through it bit by bit and just just completed what I feel needed a little bit more detail with the running stitch. All right, so that is now done. Uh, so Julie's back. Hello, Julie. Hi, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I can't wait to see what you've done. You took the feather back, and I've moaned about that all the way through this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because I had to go out and get. Well, I'm calling it a pigeon's feather, but you'll look at it and say that's not a pigeon's feather. Is that pigeon's feather? No, look, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't the one I went out for. <laughs> so I just tried it. Right, so I'm going to show you what. No, close your eyes. My feather. Yeah, okay, yeah, get yeah. We'll compare them there. Oh, I'm going to nice. show you. <laughs> now, oh, you oh yeah, I've forgotten how big that was. Yeah. That is really beautiful. Right, so this is the inspiration and this is the finish. So here we go, and this is your feather. Oh wow. Look at that. Like that. Fabulous. Put it that way, and I do when I'm working. I keep I've got a frame there. You see that picture frame poking, yeah. but it's underneath so much stuff, and I just pop it around there. But that is from your fella. That's fabulous. Hooray. Yeah. Oh, so, that. so you approve? Absolutely. I love doing this. This was so Mine nice to do. Mine is nothing like that at all oh well that's good and mine has actually got a story to it oh come on then right i'm going to put that away i need to frame that or do something you with won't it want to frame this <laughs> <laughs> i should actually i need to get something ready on my phone all right okay oh no i don't no, all right oh this is um right all right shall i not i won't look until you pop it out on the table Pop it out. Pop it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, beautiful. We, this group, we like bling. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, I see what you mean now when you text a couple of weeks ago and said your grandson. Mm. Oh, do you want to tell that? Is that your story? Yeah. Oh, I let you tell that. That is like, can I just compare these though? Look. They're not a million miles away from each other because you kept to a dark background and I've got the dark background and you've used all the colours that I've used. I've used sequins um, and they're both a bit on the blingy side. Yeah. Now, That's during the, while I was filming this and while I was doing this, I did make say something in there. I didn't know how you would like this because I didn't know how blingy you were. Now you've arrived. Oh, I'm very blingy, dear. You've arrived with something that's even more blingy than mine. There is a story here. Right, I'm going to pop that in the middle. I think that's fabulous. Can you remember where I said the, this feather came from? A magpie. Right, magpies still jewels that is why i've done glitzy for the jewels 
and I'm going to make that a bit bigger so we can see the magpie there stealing the jewel and even right what are you doing there? a bag of jewels oh oh I saw oh look we've got a butterfly there a flower oh I love these sequins and they all feel different yeah do you want to explain what these are and how they feel this, oh, this, this pink flower. Oh, no, let's go up there. I've taken it off this screen. This pink flower is flat and feels very fine. That's beautiful. It's almost satin, isn't it? It, is. it, it looks feels like really satin. Nice, it's really shiny. Now, this pink flower is raised in the middle. So if you push it down, it comes. It springs back. Oh, oh yeah. It's and sort the of colour is like a fuchsia. That's a fuchsia those two, pink. they complement each other. They do. They, they came out the same pot. Oh, did they? Of different pinks, and then you've got this really like a. a what colour would you say that was? A pale blue, like a baby blue, isn't it? It is like a baby blue butterfly, and that is made with the same sort of silky material that the small pink flower is made from and is magpies it? actually like to eat these anyway butterflies. what do they mm. i didn't realize that and then you've got another butterfly and the material is flat when you feel it it feels very flat <laughs> So these are obviously meant for sewing or glue. Oh yeah, they come I mean, from craft packs. I say because they're um, fabric, you can um, really sew those down. Yeah. Those are lovely. Yeah. And then you've got sequin leaves here that I thought would come from the tree that the magpie would be living in because they, they always live in trees. And they build their nests in trees. And there you've got a red, green, blue, and gold. There, you've even got I've even got a pink one there. And you can feel. I'm just going to move that down so it's on the screen. Okay. So, and then you, you can feel the indentations on the leaves. Yeah, that I can see those. How they've been made, which feel really nice. Yeah, very textured on. Oh, oh there's oh, another one. one that, oh, that's really pretty. Oh, that's a gorgeous it? one. That's really pretty, and it's got some <gasps> gold oh, and let's, silver on it. Let's hold that up. That's look at look at that one. Oh, that big head. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's really it's a pretty that monster's one. hand, but that that is really it's pretty. beautiful, isn't it? Oh, I love that. Oh, I love those. Oh, I love them all. I love the pink ones. Yeah, and then you've got, mm. I'll put in some stars for night time, for when they're sleeping. So these are all symbolic, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, you've got another star there, pink and blue and silver. And then the hearts, because I love magpies. Ah... Oh. And I even see a magpie yesterday. I put a chicken carcass on the bird table. Yeah. And the magpie came down and took the lot. No, you're yeah. kidding me. It was that quick. I didn't even have time to get my camera. Good grief. And then you've just got the circles for jewels, really, here. Yeah. But then close oh, up, that... A magpie's feathers sometimes look like this, don't they? They do the shine. The, the shine, colours. yeah. They look like if you've got petrol on the ground, yeah. you get a rainbow effect. And we're, what I've done here as well is the sequins are layered. Oh, yeah, you've raised them. They're so textured. They're textured in different places. If I can like, hold that up, if you can, if I can put that sideways, you might be able to see. Yeah, look, if I put that sideways, you can see that it's raised there. So you've got like a 3D rippled effect. How long did it take there? you to do this? A few days, because I did 
one layer one day and then came back and did another layer another day and I the PVA glue that I used I actually watered it down right. so it was thinner so that if I put it over the sequins it would dry clear not yeah white. I water mine down yeah. it that took a few days beautiful. and that, that's why the the paper's got a bit crinkly as well I like that it? effect it's nice isn't it yeah I do yeah. like that though these would be nice actually on the background they would yeah i'm going to make that a little uh, smaller now i didn't actually put that on the paper because i wanted to add it to the story oh so all these are symbolic yep i think that's lovely i'm looking at those sequins i get the urge to sew through them they're lovely aren't they they are lovely well i think well done You've done a really lovely job here. Oh, right, right, now tell the story. <laughs> tell the story of your beautiful grandson. Julie has a wonderful grandson. I have a wonderful grandson. He's gorgeous. Yes, he's, he's 10, is, isn't he? 10, 10 years old. Loves his nanny and his granddad. He spends a lot of time with him. But Jack's got his own bedroom at our house. And... I was doing my layers here <laughs> with sequins and I was on the second layer and I'd <laughs> left it flat on top of a box and Jack decided to kick a football around in the Oh room. no! And this went <laughs> flying and I Oh no! What? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Nan. I'm sorry. Oh, I love oh, him. I said, I'm sure I'm too <laughs> sure I forgive you. Yes, I forgive Jack anything. So, yes. yeah, that's the other story. <laughs> to it. Oh, love him. But years ago, there used to be lots of stories of people finding missing objects in magpie nests. Yeah, is that true? I don't know how true it is. And always don't leave your windows open, That's especially right. in this area because yeah. there are a lot of magpies. Yeah. And that was a thing. Don't leave your windows open if you see magpies because they'll steal your jewelry. Your your yeah. yeah. Luckily, I haven't got any jewels. <laughs> <laughs> so I can leave my windows open. Oh, you've made a nice job there. Adding, adding the uh, bits um, to the picture. Yeah, see, as everybody knows, I'm more is more. Yeah. And it looks as if you're more as more as what you're more. Stuck that on there. Look at that. Oh, it's, oh you got, you've actually used that, haven't you? Yeah. I just think that's fabulous. Well done. It's not bad. Is it? Big cheer for Julie and her challenge. Shall I do it for myself? Yeah. <laughs> hooray! <laughs> hooray! <laughs> hooray! It's <laughs> sad when you have to do it yourself. <laughs> I might get something from the computer that. Oh, that'd be lovely. So thank you very much, Julie. It's been a pleasure. Thoroughly enjoyed We've it. We've had our coffee. We didn't have cake, did we? So you no, can go no. now. Oh, thank you. I'm <laughs> Yeah, bye. I'm we don't wish to know that. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, Julie and I certainly did. We had great fun. She's actually let me keep the magpie feather, this vintage feather, and oh, I'm going to have to guard that with my life. But um, thank you to all the new subscribers as well, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you got the gist of what's going on. But anyway, I'll see you all on the Facebook group. So until the next video, take care, and I'll speak to you soon.